Today we're going to talk about mutually exclusive events. They're events that cannot occur at the same time. For example, when you toss a coin, there's no way it can land on heads and land on tails at the same time. So they're called mutually exclusive. Our first example is the dodecadraw number cube that has 12 sides, numbered 1 through 12. Our question is, what is the probability that you roll the cube and the result is an even number or a 7? Now remember, or is union because it can be in either sample space. So probability that I roll an even number or, which means union, a 7. Let's draw a diagram to see, uh, let it help us so we can see it visually. If we let a, event A be we roll an even number, we're going to put the even numbers in circle A. And if we let event B be that we're going to roll a 7, we put a 7 in the circle B. Now we need to find our sample space. That's anything that's not in circle A or circle B. So the sample space here would be 1, 3, 5, 7, and 9, or 11 and 9, because they're not in circle A or circle B. We use our Venn diagram, we can find the probability of A or B, or A union B. The number, instance for number, in the sample space was 12. If I find the number in A or B, or A union B, the number in A was 6, and the number in B was 7. So if I add them together, or 1, if I add them together, I get 7. So the probability of A or B, or A union B, would be the number in A or B, or A union B, over the number in the sample. So I had 7 in A union B, and I had 12 in my sample space. So the probability was 7 over 12. Here's another example. What is the probability that you roll a, a number cube and the result is an even number or a number greater than 7? So let's complete our Venn diagram to help us out. Let's let event A be the event you roll an even number. So notice I put 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and 12 in circle A. Now I want to complete circle B. Event B is the event you roll a number greater than 7. Notice I moved 8, 10, and 12 to the center or the intersection of A and B because they're also in set B. So I have 9 and 11 that's also greater than 7. To complete the Venn diagram, I need to put the elements in the sample that are not in circle A or circle B. Let's use the Venn diagram to help us answer the questions. So to find the probability of A or B, I'm going to find the number in the sample space, which again is 12. If I want to find the number in A or B, remember that's union B, the number in A was 6, the number in circle B was 5, and the number in A and B, which was B, the number in both sets, intersection, would be 3. So if I add them together, 6 plus 5 is 11, subtract 3 is 8. So to find the probability of A or B, remember or is union, will be the number in the union, which the number in the union we found was 8, over the number in the sample, which was 12. If I reduce both of those by a factor of 4, we would get 2 over 3. So why is A or B, or the A union B, equal to the number in A plus the number in B minus the number in A and B? Because if you think about it, we take the number in A, which was 6, and we also take the number in B, which is 5. These three numbers have been counted twice. So you can't count the intersection two times and get the right number.
Now the question wants to know, is the probability of A or B, or A union B, equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B in this case? Now remember, we already found the probability of A union B to be two-thirds. If I find the probability of A, which would be 6 out of 12, and I add that to the probability of B, which is 5 out of 12, that's going to give me 11 out of 12. So no, it would not be equal because I have two, three elements that are counted in both probabilities. So here's our rule. If the probability of A or B, which is A union B, is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B. Remember, and is intersection. Another situation. You shuffle a standard deck of playing cards and choose a card at random. What is the probability that you choose a king or a heart? So we want to know the probability of a king or it would be union, a heart. So let's let event A be the probability you choose a king and event B be the probability that you choose a heart. There are 70, 52 cards in a deck, so the number in the sample is 52. There are four kings in a deck, so the number in set A would be 4. And the probability of A would be 4 over 52, which reduces, because they're both divisible by 4, by 1 over 13. There are 13 deck, uh, hearts in a deck, so the number in B would be 13. And the probability of B would be 13 over 52, which would reduce to be 1 fourth. So the probability of A and B, otherwise known as the probability of A intersect B, would be There's only one king of hearts in a deck. So since there's only one king of hearts, the probability of A intersect B would be 1 out of 52. If I shuffle the standard deck of cards and choose a card at random, what is the probability of choosing a king or a heart? which would be the probability of a king or would be union a heart. So let's use the addition rule. The probability of A or B, which would be union, would be the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B, which would be the intersection. So I know the probability of A, a king, was 1 over 13. And I know the probability of B, which was a heart, is 1 over 4. And I found the probability that A intersect B only had one king of hearts, which is 1 over 52. So when you put this in the calculator, you get 4 out of 13. So the probability of choosing a king or a heart, which remember again, is the union is 4 out of 13.